Hey guys, Tyrop here bring you a 2v2 today. We are on crossing in the woods. Trying to stay spawning in the north. We have Captain Bow Wow as Soviets who has mechanized support, urban defense, and guard motor. Teaming up with him is William H. Harrison as Brits. Straight away going for Royal Engineers, getting in some of those recovery sappers. From the south, we have Stockyards OKW immediately going for Overwatch. And finally, Blazing as Oss, who has Storm, Fortified Armor, and Assault Support. Going for a no machine gun start. Tier 1 start as well from Bow Wow, the double combat engineers. In terms of rankings here, uh, allies are around rank 70 and Axis are in the 80s. So a very even matchup overall. Well, we're going to go for the M3A1, that's the big question. It's up against the Aussie player on his side of the map. But, you know, it's a team game. You can bring it over to the OKW side of the map as well. Have some success. Don't have to use it on your side strictly. Could be a bit of a tough start for Blazing, potentially, up against these penals. Not having a MG42 suit press them, the penals do match up very well against the Greedias before they get the LMG. Well, here we go, big fighting in the centre, the penals getting chopped up, Sixon's charging in. But just overwhelming numbers here for the Axis at the moment. Wow, off on this side. I'm easily jumping on. Okay, Sniper from Bow Wow. I was thinking he's, he's getting his next penal going a little bit late. Early Sniper. Blazing on for the uh, Mortar, which is a strange choice at this stage. Not sure why he's doing that. Up against, you know, penals, I suppose. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Combination here upgrades the Flamethrower. Allows it to beat the... Pios, but we do have a uh, big old green blob coming in, and there's a little bit of negative cover over here. Blazing looking for the wipe. I think if he went full run and gun the whole way, he maybe could have got the job done there. Didn't want to commit though. Maybe the mortar was to try clear the squad out of that building. Could have been. Do have the uh, tech truck up, so an incendiary grenade could have done that job. A little bit unusual. Ooh, well-timed retreat. That was about to get messy. That was a very, very close call for William H. Harrison. But yeah, we got the sniper out. Blazing... Looks like he's investing in his own tech, so can't immediately go for the counter sniper. Doesn't have any manpower to try and go for that. It looks like the wire off from Blazing, not very successful. Didn't stop these penals from making use of that heavy cover. Comes the mortar though, could get, actually get some decent hits from the side here. Sniper come around the corner. One shot through, got a mortar barrage. You know, should probably dodge out to the back. There they go. Big old blob coming through. But gets spotted by the section in the center, allowing the sniper to soft retreat off to safety. Not a bad idea for Stocky. A little bit unfortunate that he got spotted on his flanking attempt. Now the sniper going to get to work. Make him pay for this. The blob though, doing some pretty good work against this penal. Slightly late retreat, could actually go down. Yeah, there we go, Bow Wow losing squad. Full retreat there from Stocky after that. Maybe needs to stay in for a touch longer to assist his teammate. He has to retreat shortly thereafter, finding the 2-1-1. -on 
I can understand if uh, you know, there's a bunch of territory getting capped over here. That would be pretty good for the Axis, but... Good wipe. Bad territory control. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Hitting the field, you know, 5 minutes 30. Very fast timing on that for Blazin. Double engineers on the retreat. Combat engineers trying to plant down a mine. Pretty sure 2 to 2 will see them doing that. They have to give up the attempt. Did manage to cancel the mine, didn't get killed by the 2 to 2, so that's good. Got the munitions back at least. Oh wow, that's a wow, that's a really fast AEC. I thought that 2 to 2 was fast, but six minutes already on the other side of the map. Ouch. That was, really, that was a lightning fast AEC. That is crazy. Blazing uh, going to go for another Grenadier squad in the meantime. Definitely, I think I would be favoring the sniper and attempt the counter snipe. Doesn't have uh, any G43 commanders, so doesn't have really good run and gun potential with those Grenadiers. I'll chase down the sniper. Imagine Blazing maybe going to try hold on for the elephant. It is a uh, crossing in the woods after all. Interesting AEC getting the command vehicle here very early. slow down the rate of fire of the AC by a lot. Maybe it feels like the job is done on that now. Late retreat. Gonna get away safely though. And now T70 coming in for Bow Wow, so it's gonna be light vehicle supremacy for the allies. Got a pack coming in now for Blazing. Already do have the Rakesson out for Stocky. Spider of going Overwatch hasn't managed to get any Jaeger lights so far. They are very, very strong against Brits, who, you know, is on his side of the map. I think I probably would have favoured the Jaeger lights over the MG myself. So, you know, he's up against a sniper in live vehicles. MG's probably not going to do too well against either of those. Shot in there from the Rakitten. Got the bolster now on the sections. G70 coming in from the other side, getting a couple shots through. Rakitten misses the return fire. Guards out now for Bow Wow. So he's going for the ISU 152 and Blazin did lock into Storm, so no elephant. Probably going to live to regret that. And uh, we're going to be seeing the ISU-152 at some stage. Strange to go for Storm at this timing as well. You know, could have gone for the Jaeger Command Squad instead of that Grenadier he just built a minute or two ago. Uh, it looks like he's trying to get the uh, camouflage going, of course. Can be somewhat helpful against the Sniper. Now that the detection range on Grenadiers is much worse, not quite as effective as it used to be. Mine out. Doesn't get any wipes with it though. Now we're having to take a pretty big backward step at the moment. This is guards on the other side of the map. No retreat on this machine gun. Stop you losing it. the rest of the fight but here come the guards guards gonna settle for stealing away the machine gun not gonna look for the wipe on this retreating squad fair enough he's, he's happy with what he got there mine in the center no sweepers for blazing has been struggling for munitions it's another reason why the yeah, command squad would have been quite nice don't have to upgrade the lmg on that last green deer has been, you know, going for a lot of uh, 
ambush camo. I think I saw two of these greenies with ambush camo. So it's another munitions sink. Trippin's headquarters on the field. No, Faust just gonna retreat from that. A lot of manpower. I'm guessing we're going to be seeing overs next. The double brain sections now is making life very difficult for Stocky. Destroying that sandbag. And there we go. Overs coming in. Good news is the sections not fed too quite yet. Not any of them. So overs. Gonna have an easier time when they do arrive. Don't have to come against those buffed up sections. So we switching sides. Get away from that pack. It is right from the A's. Pretty good damage onto the guards. They drop a PTRS. If it was the DP, we'd probably see Blazin trying to pick that up. Another rifle made out. Just as I was changing the camera. Dodged, though. Uh, Stocky on the run. One shot connecting on the AEC. Got the Obers there. Sandbag working reasonably well. Do have to worry about these squads coming into the retreat path. William, though, hasn't gone for any flamethrowers on these engineers. Thought we would see one of them upgraded. Maybe the other getting the uh, sweeper. But manages to get away from that, retreating out of that pretty clean, and goes for a second squad of Obers now as well. So uh, that is going to cause these sections some trouble once those others here hit, start to fit too. Until then, when you Harrison should be in a reasonable position. Smoke out. Double smokes. It's one thing you lose when you upgrade the flamethrower. Oh boy, Faust connecting the Rakitin shooting at the sandbags though. Might not be able to get in range of the AC. Should probably try to fire off some smoke itself. Backs away, Rakitin trying to close the distance. All of the units from William have had to retreat. Getting sitting up. And connecting, there goes the AEC. Good pick off there from Stocky. Oh, T70 diving in here. Could get the kill on the pack. The sniper there. Goes for the green ears instead. I think Bow Wow did have the option of, you know, just going in. Try to kill the pack. Plays it safe though. Medium tank in production for Blazing, gonna be the Panzer IV. It's the first one to tick. No hammer or anvil coming in yet. New machine gun crew, ready and waiting. William Harrison did, you know, spend some fuel upgrading the bolster and the weapon racks. Interesting to see, he goes for full. Uh, Full medics as well, even though he does already have medics back at base. I think, you know, probably go for at least one pyrotechnic section, maybe even two in this kind of case. Having the on field healing is pretty nice, but the extra sight, the ability to throw out the flares to bring in the base howitzer fires, very valuable. Oh, 
Oh, Panzer IV coming out onto the British side. No to tank on yet for William Harrison. Perhaps a bit of an oversight. Probably should have one at the moment. Oh, and this is a bad retreat path. Late retreat for the section. Pios. Wow, I cannot believe it. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, no way he's getting away alive. And now the Obers pick up the LMG as well. That is really bad news for William Harrison. It's a four and a bit of trouble. It's away though. Oh, that's triple LMGs. That Zis is dying so fast. He's a little bit too slow packing that up. Trying to escape. Pack and hot pursuit as well. But machine gun coming in from the site. Cruiser with the combat engineers. Bringing in the planes now. Plays and dodging back. Oh, the grenadiers go down though. Pack D crews. Oh, okay, W Panzer Fours over here as well. We do have the Cromwell coming in with the rear armor exposed. Anti tank gun coming in fast as well. Flame mortar support coming down though. This could be quite devastating. Axis in a good position, but don't want to overplay their hands. Oh, the Volkswagen go down to the flame mortar support so fast. Now the Ober's retreating over it. Could be in some trouble themselves. Here we go, blazing a little bit slow, jumping on the uh, pack. And as the dust settles, it's going to be double anti tank guns for Bow Wow, it looks like. So, yeah, it was a strong start, but bad finish. One Green Deer down, pack stolen. Fox Green Deer's down as well. How quickly it went south. Axis didn't lose their tanks at least though, so in a good position to bounce back. Goes for the Jaeger Command Squad now to replace the lost Green Deer as well. Are we going to see a howitzer from the Axis? That's the big question next. Both of them have a howitzer available. Burn a little bit of trouble. Good retreat timing. Is this decrewed by the LMG Grenadiers though? It's all coming across, but no machine gun upgrades on this. Penals go down though on retreat. Pack missing. Got the marked vehicle active. Pression slow to kick in here by the machine gun. Here it goes finally. The enemy is encroaching on our territory. Could dodge very early from Bow Wow getting away from that mortar fire. Rebuild on the pack for Blazon. You go for Battle Phase, yeah, he's going for Battle Phase 3 as well, so in the case it's probably not going to be a howitzer from him. Oh, well, we got one from uh, Stocky coming up now. And uh, no bombing strike in this commander anymore, so let's make it a much safer option. Seem to do a mine there as well. In case he can bait the uh, Panzer IV into that area. Panzer IV playing it safe though, doesn't want to overplay its hand before it gets repaired back up to full by the stern pyres. Taking a lot of damage out. 
in the river. Nice smoke, bit of smoke and cap action. Cromwell switching sides. Fast reposition from the Raketan. The Ober's long gone. Try to go for some attack grounds. Shots blocked at the moment, but we'll eventually get through. Oh, and the double anti tank guns from this side as well. Just make sure he gets a couple mines up. Uh, covering that side. A bit of vet there coming through on the Rakitin. And uh, the howitzer opening up. Ooh, that could have been a devastating hit. Sniper double anti tank guns right there. Bit of a lucky break for Bow Wow, it seems. Two kills for the howitzer. Doesn't look like it's going to get much more than that. behind this as well with the green this good damage from the friendly fire of the howitzer it's, it's reduced though compared to what the enemies take and that was a really fast machine gun decrew there that's nasty some g green is a bit too man you really spit out the damage Empire's spot the mine back there. It's tank gun bouncing though. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Cromwell coming on to the side, doesn't have much support, could be in some trouble. Running for some crush action. He's activated the hunt as well. Will have spotted the Panzer Ford rotating. With the vehicle detection on that. give the Cromwell a penetration bonus as well. Panzer IV probably should pop the Blitz here to boost up his rate of fire. Oh, one of the Rakitans missing. Stuka dive bomb on the machine gun. Really good Stuka dive bomb there, William Harrison. Not able to get away in time. And now the anti-tank gun. Oh, big mistake. It's decrewed and gifted, so lucky break for William Harrison getting away with the Panzer IV, I mean, uh, with the Cromwell. Slight misplay, I'd say, though, with the Panzer IV. I think he could have stuck around for one more shot from it pretty safely. Maybe that could have been the killing blow instead of the missed Rakitten shot. Comes the Werfer. Got one into tank guns and the Sniper. Guards retreating through it. Overall, though, pretty uh, poor start. Well targeted, but didn't get the reward. And now got the ISU 152 on the field. But a T70 can be used in recon mode as well as a sniper. So plenty of things to provide sight. This 152 could be devastating to the Axis and uh, needed because with William Harrison losing a few units, if start to fall behind a touch. Bauer also losing that penal not too long ago. I'm not coming back in. Activate the hunt again. Doesn't want to dive in too far though. There are the Rakettans. Ends up being a decent trade for the Cromwell. Only taking one shot. Sniper popping up a flare. Or is that the Yagi Command Squad? With their flares are not on cooldown at the moment, so I'm not sure. Triple cap against the Allies, though. Gonna get something going here. And we've got the AVRE coming through. Cromwell baiting. Comes the AVRE, looking to line up a shot. This Rakit in pretty well space. Oh, he retreated though, as I, you know, covered in my micro tips. If possible, don't retreat, just right click backwards. So there was a couple Rakit models standing over here that ran towards the gun as it started to retreat. And I 
think otherwise it would have probably survived at two models if that hadn't have happened and definitely didn't need to retreat the other kitten so it was a bit of a panic move from stocky and as a result gonna lose a lot of territory control now William Harrison finally spent through that it was a 1200 manpower float he had earlier putting a new section another anti-tank gun stealing away that Rakesson as well but you're not, still no mines over here you do have to worry that the AVRE could just drive up and blast the howitzer which is perhaps what uh, William Harrison is considering doing at the moment need to bring sweepers up though if you want to attempt that doesn't have any sweepers on this squad which I think is a mistake Okay, dodges forwards of the AVRE shot. Rakitin coming in from the side with uh, quite a lot of damage. We've got the planes coming down now as well. Looks like they are targeting the AVRE. Brazen bringing in his Panzer IV as well. AVRE now on one shot. Six pounder and way too deep. Deep crew very quickly in the river. With the Rakitin coming around the corner. AVRE still alive. All Panzer IVs charging in. There goes one AVRE. This Panzer IV exposing its rear armor, missing the shot. There goes the Cromwell. Panzer IV goes down to the Rakitin from the side, though. Section goes down in the midst of all of that chaos. Oh, and there we go. Panzer IV from Stocky also falling. What was that? Two Panzer IVs for Cromwell AVRE. I suppose William Harrison lost his anti-tank gun and one section, so that seals it as a good fight for the Axis, I'd say, but did also have to spend a lot of munitions on that. Ooh, and that pack goes down on the far side as well. Maybe Blazing too focused on the Panzer IV push. So marginal victory, I'd say, for the Axis then. Get the coming for a bit of crush these guards right, vehicle active got the ISU coming through the center still only two kills on that worth it the house are coming down on this side as well up to six now are dodging forwards Ooh, and takes a Big shot. Is this down? Weapon still available for the recruit. Got the uh, sniper firing up a flare. Ice U coming through the center. On uh, armor piercing mode. Big shot on the Panther. Getting aggressive. Oh, dive bomb on the other anti tank gun. Ice U coming through. Panther one shot. Mark vehicle plane is worn off, but the Panther still goes down. Flair doing the spotting. Very sloppy stuff from Blazon. Allowing his Panther to die like that. Probably should have heard the ICU in the fog, if I, if I had to guess. And just regardless, you know, you, the Mark vehicle is running. The plane was up in the air. Provides sight while the plane is there, so... Even if he didn't notice the flare, just from the marked vehicle itself. Shouldn't have uh, been sitting so dangerously like that when the ISU... If he, you know, if he had no idea the ISU was that far up, sure, but he saw it firing from here. So it was already in an advanced position. There we go, Obus going down. Nasty shot from the ISU. Got one of the LMGs as well. Looks so like William Harrison maybe going to try save for another AVRE. In the meantime, probably needs to go for another anti tank gun. Stocky going for the uh, King Tiger. Going to be hitting the field shortly. 120 or so manpower away from that. Ooh, that was a big worth of strike. Close call. Guards nearly went down. 
Can't to fire into the base. Could catch a bit of follow up. Ooh, that was so close to it. <laughs> Take an engine crit. Got dodge forwards with this Kachusha as well. The scatter at this range could easily get hit. So he's going to go for Barrage first. Brings on the retreats. Oh, but the T70 goes down. I didn't think they had the angle there. There must have been a lucky attack round. Unfortunate for Bow Wow. Got the King Tiger on the field. So it's going to cause some issues. Bow Wow lost both his anti tank guns, so lacking anti tank himself. William Harrison again, a little bit too much float. Go for the wipe on retreat. Machine gun gets the job done. Oh, interesting. Bow Wow going for a uh, quad next. Okay, we can look for one extra shot here. He's through the armor. Mark Vehicle active though, so it looks like he's going to back off. As he's switching over to armor piercing, missing its shot. Don Rakit pushing through the center, looking for some damage. Can't find it. Oh, but there we go. Nice you and Rakitten. Low angle worth a strike there, hoping to catch the sniper. Doesn't quite manage it though. Not a bad idea though. Getting the quad now. See stock. He's still a lot of munitions away from the sector assault, though. So I think uh, EC-85 would have been best at first, but can go for that next. Pretty close to that now. Here comes the AVRE as well. Was on retreats. Oh, a little bit sloppy from William Harrison. I think he should have cancelled that. It's two over miles at least, though. Right? Tiger on the side now. But do have the second anti tank gun out for William Harrison. And King Tiger getting some big hits. Tank guns over here. Lining up on the KT. No sight yet. Kitten just out of range. Ten kills so far on the ISU. She's coming very far forwards. On to this side, good switch of targets. Going for the double anti tank guns over here. Good connection there. Oh, maybe firing a little bit too far off to this side though. Okay, it looks like it maybe is targeting the squad pine sandbags. Not entirely sure. Does force a lot of retreats though. The limp wristed against the infantry without the machine gun upgrade. There's basically no point in even trying to shoot those combat engineers. Just opening himself up to damage from the double tank destroyers. Blazing building some Panzer Grenadiers now. Which I don't think is the way forwards. I imagine he's going to put tricks on them, but Shrek Panzer Grenadiers tend not to last too long in front of the ISU 152. This is a nasty combination. 
Oh, King Tiger coming in from this side. The close range Kachusha Barrage backfiring there. Good pick off by Stocky. Dodging Fords of the Werfer Strike, though. Oh, Raketon needs to get out of there. Oh, look at that pathing on it, though. That is horrible. Luckily, though, William Harrison, poor targeting, easily could have got the wipe if he targeted that a little bit deeper. And he had the range to do so. Let's go down on the far side. Not fully repaired, comes through for some damage. It's starting to lag a bit, right? Oh, there goes the Vickers as well. Wheels are falling off a bit for Stocky. Targeting these uh, tanks with the howitzer fire, it looks like. Alright, not a bad option. Yak Panzer for Stocky has the Sector Assault planes ready to rumble as well. Do have that quad out the back, hasn't revealed itself. It's in anti air mode. So. Imagine the Axis gonna try to look some look to get something going with that sector assault, but probably not gonna work out for them too well. Blazing meanwhile hasn't upgraded that machine gun on the Panther. I think trying to save for the Stuka dive bomb. Has had reasonable success with it so far. Side. Ooh, close call on those P-Greens. Mark vehicle active on the KT. Got the planes coming through though. Some damage to the SU-85. With a strike again, a little bit too deep for the guards. Get a little bit of suppression from it, but that's about it. We have the anti-infantry plane left though, one of them, taking a while to get shot down. It is getting some engine crits cooking. And to try to come through, looking for another shot on the SU-85. Oh, the Stuka dive bomb knocks out the SU-85, really well done by Blazin. We've got the Jagdpanzer Panther combo here, looking for the ICU-152 kill. We've got a couple of these tank guns coming in from the side. Panther coming forwards. Before with the ram though, with the engine crit, there goes the panther as well. But good luck there for Bowel penetrating. Panther probably would have died anyway though. But yeah, I think Blazing probably should have dived in with the panther there. Hope for the kill. Pop the blitz. He had the munitions available for the blitz. What was that? T34, uh, E-35 in exchange for a Panther. I don't know if there are any other major losses. Good worth a strike there from Blazing. Now it's into the center as well. Tens of meteors, are they going to pick up? Yeah, LMG-34. Doesn't look like it. The green blob. M52 just about fully repaired, returning to the front lines. Tiger not fully repaired, but going for a couple hits regardless. The VP's a uh, nasty shot there from the KT. Late retreat. Down go the guards. There goes the machine gun, stocky recruited. Didn't last long though against that AVRE. Never, I don't think, punched any mines to guard this side as well. Oops, a fire flight. Tiger on spearhead mode here, boosting up his sight. Good tulip rockets, good connection. 
Not enough follow-up to finish off the KT though. Next mark vehicle on now, but a little bit late. Just enough the Yag Panzer though, but eyes you on uh, armor piercing most, getting some big hits in. See, uh, worth a strike. Not able to catch the sniper though, there's been a few close calls. Sniper still standing. Here comes the AVRE. Howitzer is exposed. He's not going to go for the Obers. Eyes on the prize. There goes the Howitzer. He never built any mines through here this entire time. He pays the price for it. Kittens couldn't get there in time. Yagpanzer is also damaged. Freshly repaired now, though. Axis massively on the back foot, though. Triple cap cooking. Rebuild on the Panther for Blazing. Aviary getting aggressive, maybe going to try and look to stun the Tiger. Oh, and he gets it too with the Chewer Rockets. Here we go, here comes the Aviary looking to finish the game. Ooh, catch you later to the King Tiger. And I'd say that just about sinks any hopes the Axis had of coming back. Stocky pays the price of using that King Tiger on low health. Really good tulip rockets from William Harrison, stunning it in place, allowing the AVRE damage. Panther in here, getting aggressive, going for the ISU-152. One more shot required. And there we go. Jagpanzer gets the kill. Engineers get the snare off on the Panther. Rakitten landing some hits on the Jagpanzer. AVRE trying to line up a shot here. There goes the Jagpanzer to the Rakitten. AEC, fresh AEC for William Harrison. Oh, fresh AEC 85 finishing off the Panther. And that was all of the Axis team's armor. Pans are out, but they're draining out so fast, I don't think it's going to matter. L2P Lucker, <laughs> something like Paul would say. <laughs> oh boy. Well, quite a few twists and turns to this one. Pretty good game overall. Stocky, I don't know, like, I, f I feel like, you know, he went for Overwatch, didn't go for any Jaeger lights, a little bit strange opting for the machine gun instead, which didn't really help him out too much. But yeah, decent howitzer action. Performed reasonably well overall. Bow Wow, a little bit lucky, I'd say, with the how uh, sniper. There were quite a few rocket artillery and maybe even howitzer moments where this could have gone down. But it escaped. Maybe a, a few too many infantry wipes late in the game for the Axis. Caused them to fall a little bit behind. And yeah, never minding this passageway up against the AVRE. I feel like that is a massive mistake building the howitzer and not offering any mines to protect it. So yeah, GG. Well played by the Allies. But yeah, maybe maybe this commander, you know, he got some really good value out of the stupid dive bomb, but have to expect you're probably going to be up against the ISU, especially if you see guards. So I might have paid to uh, hang back and went for that elephant commander instead. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like your game, be cast by me. Details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.